Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here, and I'm on a walk with Snickers. Just heading up to the church just for a nice little stroll. It is Juneteenth as I record this. To remember the emancipation of slaves, which is, um, of course, slavery, a horrible blight on our country. But as we, as we have in our history, being able to write that, we continue to also think about as Catholics, especially our concern for those who are still enslaved through human trafficking. I know it's not an exciting thing or a happy thing to be talking about, but it is, it is real. It's something that we need to continue on. But of course, this is with the African slaves that uh, this uh, holiday happens for us, uh, that we think about them. This coming weekend, we're going to hear from Job. I think Brad is preaching. I don't know exactly what he'll be speaking about because we haven't chatted about that yet. Normally on this day, we will have had our meeting and reviewed last week's Mass and a whole bunch of other things. And in the meantime, I won't know what he's thinking, but Job. So Job has uh, been questioning God for all the horrible things that have happened to him. And we kind of just jump right into just a section of where God challenges him back. Like, basically, like, where were you when... The world was beginning, and the uh, waters were made, and all that kind of stuff. So that is a pretty big hint. Uh, you say, drop the microphone for God, and Job just kind of shuts up. But he's a holy guy, and so of course, he recognizes the God as God, and he's one of his creations. Check in the street. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay, someone's keeping the wave off. That's good. Thank you. Person in the red pickup. So this connects this idea, like, because he says, basically, who's bigger than the storms, who started everything. There's a whole list of things that go on. We just can hear a snippet of it. But it connects with the waters and the oceans and storms uh, in the gospel. So Job, the first reading, and then the gospel, which we hear about Jesus in the boat basically falling asleep in the middle of a storm. And they wonder, do you not care? And of course, what does he do? He silences and calms the storm. Pretty awesome. Lots of storms in our lives. Will it be personal? There'd be interpersonal, political. Maybe there's other things going on at work, maybe in family. All kinds of stuff that can be storms in our lives. But it's funny because, or not ha oh, funny, but it's interesting that amidst the people that we know, you know, short of our spouses or your spouses or your uh, family members, many of our friends, we know them, but we don't know a lot about them. <laughs> Snickers, he's a squirrel. <laughs> we don't know a lot about them. And so I'm thinking, here is something that I want to encourage you to consider. Everybody's got something going on. Everybody is bearing a burden and everybody has some kind of storm somewhere. And without opening a can of worms where it's none of our business, as Christians, heading up to the, heading up to the church now, as Christians, and especially if we have friends who are Christians, it's totally appropriate and a wonderful form of evangelization to ask them, point blank, what can I pray for for you? What is it that's going on that I can pray for? And of course, they have free will to say nothing or I'm okay. I've heard that before. And we honor that. But they may tell you about something that's going on that they truly struggle with and they would like your help, God's help through you. Because so many things are happening to us that are beyond our control, and that would be quite the blessing. And instead of saying, okay, I'll pray for you about that, instead, ask, can I pray with you right now? And see what they say. I've had very few people say, 
Oh no, that's okay. Most of the time, okay, so yes, you might say, well, because you're a priest. Yes, that's true, but that doesn't mean that always that's the case. I've had lots of people try this and it's amazing, wonderful, and eye-opening. And it develops a closer relationship with that person and our faith grows, both of you. Or myself, the person I'm praying with, or if you're praying with somebody else, we grow closer. And God does intervene. Remember, there's power in prayer. Instead of thinking, oh, the last ditch effort we have is praying. How about the first ditch effort should be prayer? Right? So that's a, that's a first step of evangelization. Because that way, and again, it's not about forcing anybody to you know, open a can of worms to say something that they don't feel comfortable with. They have free will to, you know, to push you off if they want. That's okay. But you may be the one that they are looking for. So someone, someone to ask them how they're doing. Because sometimes people feel alone or don't understand or don't care. And you'd be saying the statement, you'd be making the statement that, you care. You care enough to ask God's intercession, intercession for them. Because it's that important. People have all kinds of medical issues, things like that. And they're looking for someone to help them. Now that's step one of evangelization in a way of cultivating a, a sense of a prayer and I think it's really important in our church that we find uh, in ourselves as a parish a culture of prayer where we're not afraid to pray for each other right then and right there. And what you're going to see, we're uh, starting up a thing called Game Day come fall where a good chunk of the op staff will be present. And so will a prayer team that I've been working with who will be outside or inside, depending on what the weather's like, just being ready for your prayers. And all I have to do is walk up to them. You'll know them by their uh, red... Uh, either vests or jackets. You might have seen I've been wearing one. And they're there just for prayer. Let's pray. This is who we are. This is what we're supposed to be doing. This is how we live our life, by praying for each other, by caring for each other, and keeping God in that relationship. Here's a second idea. As you get to know people, you may know a lot about them. But there's one thing that's really important, more than what they do for work, what their hobbies are, it's their faith walk. And maybe you would try this and say, you know, we know we've known each other for a long time. I'm curious, you know, I love my faith, you do too. Would you mind sharing your your faith walk with me? Tell me about your faith. What was going on when you were growing up and Let's see where they go. Might be surprised. Maybe they're struggling. But maybe you'll be inspired because you had no idea how deep their faith was and how amazing God has worked in their lives. They may share some miracles or just all kinds of things that could happen. Pray. And ask. As we do this, we will grow closer in our bonds. Bonds of faith and love. And too often, people will form... Sadly, bonds because of secrets they hold to each other or uh, things that they don't want anybody to know. That's not a way to bond people together in a relationship. We need to be people of prayer. And so whenever you see me or Father Anthony, Deacon Brett, at this point, and you want to have a prayer, you want us to pray for you at you know, Mass or before Mass, we're there. We'll be there for you. Just ask, hey, can, can you pray for me? And some of you, I know, may need anointing of the sick because you have surgery. I just had several of this last weekend and, and the weekend before. We're, Father Anthony and I are very excited to do that. There is power in that sacrament. It's an amazing prayer. And of course, using the Holy Oriel, that point of the Holy Spirit, does amazing things. So I want you to think about that. Those are two things to do. Pray for somebody if they need it. Ask them if they need prayer. And 
if you know them, consider asking them, would you be willing to share your faith walk with me? Or tell me about your faith or your history with the faith? I would start with people you know and people that are from our parish and see where that goes. Now, as I'm walking, I'm going home here now. The wind is hitting me. I apologize if the wind is hitting the microphone right now, especially. Nothing much I can do about it. I will see you this weekend. Deacon Brett, again, as I mentioned, is offering the homily. And we will have a special guest at the 1115 Mass. Who? You know? That'll be Father James Ladd. This will be his first Mass. And he wanted to share that with us. That is wonderful. Later, of course, this Saturday, if you're watching this on Friday, this, that would be tomorrow, will be the ordination of both James Ladd and Justin Echeverria. Justin, Father Justin, and it'll be the following Thursday, next week, we'll be offering our, our morning Mass. The 815 Mass, and of course we'll have receptions after both of these, so the 10, or the 1115 Mass for, uh, with uh, James, Father James Ladd and Father Justin Echevarria, the 815 a.m. Thursday morning daily Mass. I'll see you then. God bless you. Bye-bye. Okay, Snickers, let's go. Good boy. Way to go. Okay, Snickers. Let's go this way, bud. Come on. Hey, detour. 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 Good golly. Come on, leave it. Come on. Come on. Silly puppy.